off the brick. Word up. It's the Ambassador Street DJ Red Boy B minus radio. We got art on the fence right here in Fulton Street Park. Make sure you check out all the extraordinary artists along the fence on Fulton Street, Fulton Street side, excuse me. Make sure you get their contact information. They got some extraordinary artwork up. Go check them out. Brick live on the cam. Good afternoon, welcome to the Fulton Street Art Fair, 2016, the 58th anniversary of the being on the fence in Bedford Stuyvesant. And my name is Willie Lee Holly. I'm a part of the Fulton Street Art Fair. And this is some of my work that you're looking at at this moment. Um, I like to work up uh, the impressionist style of painting where we go into the neighborhoods and paint the urban scenes of the neighborhood that we live in. Now this is the heart of Bedford Stuyvesant and Fulton Street that you're looking at at this moment here. And this is one of the paintings that is being exhibited today. Uh, at this time here now, we're gonna go over here to Tompkins and Putman Avenue at the Brewer. Uh, this is a painting that's been painted. And then we go here to a little late scene here of the 9-11, uh, where it's in provenization where I took the dancers' movement and put them into the action of the, the picture itself. Now, here we are at one face, two sides, the African carvings of African descent, where you see the face of one person, but two sides of a woman and a man that you're looking at. And I thank you for seeing this artwork and come out and be able to enjoy the, the whole rest of the month of the Fulton Street Art Fair. And my name is Willie Lee Holly, 47A, email, come. Thank you very much. Have a nice one. My name is Otto Niels. I've been here with the Fulton Art Fair for 58 years. I'm the only one that has been in each and every ex exhibition for, for those 48 years. In the beginning, the fair was founded by this woman, Shirley Hawkins, who was a businesswoman who lived in the area and who uh, recognized that they were, realized there was a tremendous amount of talent in the black community and she wanted to showcase it. So she contacted Jacob Lawrence and Ernie Critchlow, who became the co-directors of the Fulton Art Fair. Others that came and participated in the fair were Tom Feelings, Vivian Schuyler Key, Al Hollingsworth, Richard Mayhew, and a number of other artists who had become very, very well known over the years. And uh, I might mention that uh, my work is in many, many mediums. I'm a multimedia artist and uh, I work in a variety of mediums. That is wood, stone, bronze, oils, watercolors, pastels, and collages, and prints, uh, uh, serographs, etchings, and lithographs. This uh, work, uh, which is featured here, is a watercolor that I did from a photograph that I had taken during my travels in West Africa. And uh, this particular photograph, I think, was taken in 1974. And I call it a fetish girl, fetish woman. I have another one called fetish woman. And uh, again, it was done in watercolor. This uh, watercolor, which I call Bright Sun, was done directly in, on the spot in Jamaica. 
uh, I, I was in a, a wonderful place in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, and I saw this uh, and I thought it would make an interesting uh, uh, painting, so I painted. Again, that's in watercolor. This one is the fetish girl, gun in watercolor from a photograph in West Africa, Ghana, West Africa. This image here is, is called a collage, and I call it the toast. Uh, uh, this is one of the few collages that I've, I've done the toast. Now this image is from a photograph that I took from one of my trips to Guyana in South America. It's a, mar a market woman and again it was done in watercolor. This is the 58th anniversary of the Fulton Art Fair and I would like to see the 60th and uh, beyond uh, where the Fulton Art Fair is a, a feature in our community, where people can come out and enjoy uh, wonderful works by a variety of artists. Hopefully you will be able to come out and, and attend the 58th, the 59th, the 60th, and so on. Thank you so much. I think it's very difficult to talk about, maybe I should say for me, oneself as an artist, because What I do is I act as a messenger, which means that I receive messages from what I'm assuming is a party, a positive force, and I, I then try to translate it as best as I can into a visual form in a few minutes you will see some of my pieces. But I think more than that, you will see the work of some really great artists from Brooklyn and the New York community. We even have a few brothers and sisters coming over from Jersey. So I hope that next year, or if you see this before the Fulton Art Fair is over, you get here to see what your brothers and sisters are doing and more than that bring young people so that they can see what their potential is no, 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 no. and i and i thank you the first one is human ball game the second is called matriarchal it should immediately say something to all the sisters and what their role is from traditional African society in our society today. I'm going to move on to the third. The third, hopefully again, is self-explanatory. It's very simple. It's a royal celebration. The fourth piece is called Extended Family. In that you see the grandfather, the father, the mother, the relatives, a young child, and it says exactly what the title says, our extended family. The piece you're viewing now is simply a tribute to our elders who are giving wisdom to the people. The circle or globe you see in the hands of the elder represents that wisdom. 
This piece is called Flying. It has a poem that must be read and absorbed to understand its true meaning. It depicts the history of our existence in this culture. The last piece, Extended Family, is a black and white duplication of the one that you saw earlier in color. The meaning is exactly the same. The presentation, rather than being in color, is in black and white for its intensity. And as an artist, I thank you for viewing my work. My history, like many of us out here, is that I too am a veteran. I go back to the Korea area. And like many of us, I have passed my 80th birthday, so to just to, to people, to the world, especially our people. And I thank you for being Good afternoon. My name is Charlotte Key. I'm acting president of Fulton Art Fair 2016. I have been doing art since 2009. 2008 when my cousin introduced me to Dorsey's Gallery. And in the process, I met my mentor and teacher, Otto Niels, very well-known artist. Um, he has helped me with my sculpture, oil painting. I've also encountered uh, with uh, if, um, James Denmark, who has helped me with my collages. And that's where I've taken my artwork to this point, into collages and mixed, mixed media. Unaffordable living. I became an activist in 2016 with unaffordable living in New York. I've lived, I was born and raised in New York, born, lived in Brooklyn all my life, except for a brief stint in Arizona. But yes, the rent is too doggone high, and it's unaffordable for us who have lived here all our lives. We can't afford to live here anymore. And I am a native New Yorker, Brooklyn night. Yep. Madness, 2016. That's how I feel about this campaign, this election, this whole process. Yes, and I tried to reflect it in my artwork of what I feel and how I feel. Very activist. Um, I am a man. Reflects a young man stirring the pot. That piece is called Stirring the Pot. Well, he's letting people know that he is a man and this is what's happening in our society. And he's stirring it up. Endangered babies, um, with what's going on in the world with the animals and our children. Yes, the abuse and the um, uninterest in taking care of them and then taking care of our children in the animal kingdom and in our kingdom. Spring Affair was my, my, my first real collage that I did in mixed media. It's a collage with paper and oil on a canvas board. And I was just happy and into a music mood. And that was my first real collage I did. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Mr. Isaacs, for your participation in the Fulton Art Fair this year as a participant and as a producer of this documentary. Hey, I'm Carl McIntosh. I'm an artist. I'm right now a student of Mr. Otto Neal. I'm also the director of the Dorsey Art Gallery on Rogers and Fenimore one of the oldest black galleries in Brooklyn, if not in New York. Uh, I'm glad to be out here with the Fulton Art Fair because this whole system was set up by a lot of artists from the old days. Some of them now are ancestors, E by A. And we are, are trying to continue with the tradition of doing something for ourselves as artists. Uh, my work is on the wall, 
and I understand we have a new vice president of the Fulton Art Fair. Her name is Charlotte Key. And uh, I am glad somebody picked up the mantle, and she has a crew with her. And uh, I'm just fortunate to be an artist. I'm blessed. I studied West African art for a long time. I used to belong to uh, Egg Bay. And it gave me direction for my work. My work is actually spiritually inspired. I have to say that because it comes through when it comes through. And it continue to come through because that's what I am. I'm an artist. Uh, this piece is called I'm Leaving You. I, I like to do uh, a lot of colorful work. I like uh, yellow is one of my favorite colors because I like light in my work. And this, the unique thing about this, I guess, is the colors. And uh, we're not sure who's saying what here, but it says I'm leaving you. I don't know if it's her saying that to him or him saying that to her. But uh, a lot of people like the colors. I like the colors. And it gives you a, like a, a down-home kind of a house or country kind of a feeling. They're modern in their own way, but they are country in their own way also. Now the next piece, the next piece is, uh, is like a little music theme. And I, I think I did that with a uh, water acrylic. The water down the acrylic, like it's like a watercolor kind of thing. And a felt tip pen or a marker. And uh, it's just a, a music theme. And I, I did this, I did a few of them. It was like a, a recess, you're taking a break. So, because it's so easy to do, blah, 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 boom, 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 and there you are. Okay, the next one is, is a collage. It's a, I got a, a method, I do some faces like this. It's very easy. And why it's easy is, you get some mat board, you cut out two figures, two faces, and you tack it somewhere where you don't glue it down and then you get some pieces of paper from a uh, advertisement, from a uh, voter registration, posters and stuff like that. And then you, you, you rip it, you rip the paper, this and that, and you stick it behind the, the piece. You stick it behind the piece to get a background. So that's how this background is built. It's just pieces stuck behind the two heads that I cut out. Okay, and when you think you got what you want, then you glue it down. And then you glue the features on the pieces you cut out, the lips, the eyes, the hair. And it's a very easy thing to do. So it's easy for you to try. Just cut out two faces, tack them somewhere where you got room behind them, get the pieces of cardboard, paper, whatever it is, and stick it behind there to make a background and glue it down. And that's, uh, that's how that happened. Now the next piece is uh, called Seesaw. It's one of my old collages. Cause you can see, I, I, well, I don't know if you can see, the style is a little different, but it's really not different if you look at it. But I can tell you that this is a, a old piece and it's called Seesaw. It's two little children doing the Seesaw thing. And I don't know why I call it different because if you look at it, it looks like the rest of the collage. So that's all I can say about that. Okay, this piece, I, I, I really don't remember the name, but it is a very old piece. It's a, a mother and two children. And you notice she don't have a mouth because I didn't want her talking to me. <laughs> I just wanted her to be the mother with the two children. And this is done with cray pads. In the old days, cray pads was the only material that I really knew you could buy it in the five and 10. It's really like an oil pastel, but in the old days, the artists used to laugh at me, talking about, you using cray pads? But cray pads was only a brand name for a material, which was a oil pastel. So this is something that came from the old days. And I could say it's from study of West African art because of the design and it's just, a, it's just a nice piece. I think it, it flows, you know? So I still use Cray Pass because Cray Pass is everlasting. It don't fade, it don't do this, it don't crack, it don't nothing. 
So I still use, use Crate Pass. Oh, well, he tell me to close it out. I don't know how to close it out, because it keep coming. And I don't want to close it out. I want it to keep coming. Okay, thank you, brother. My name is Diane Collins. I've been with the Fulton Art Fair now for over 10 years. I've been painting or taking part in artful activities since I was a child. And I've joined with the Dorsey Gallery and my mentor Otto Niels has helped me to improve um, on my realistic paintings. I started off enjoying uh, abstract paintings and these four pieces are part of a part of a set um, just to express a certain freedom in color and form and shape. The art that you're looking at is part of an um, abstract series. Um, the large piece is a non, uh, it's our, our, it's completely abstract, um, expressing a certain freedom. I love the colors and working with mis mixed media in it. The next three pieces show uh, vessels. They're abstracted and they're showing containers and vessels and things that hold other things with a touch of abstract. Good afternoon, we're at the Fulton Art Fair. This is my first time participating with the Fulton Art Fair. Uh, I've been studying art all my life and um, decided to make art my major focus in my life after I retired after years in, in uh, retail management and, um, and also working in the garment industry. So I'm here displaying my artwork at the Fulton Art Fair. I hope you enjoy my artwork and uh, contact me if you uh, need any information about the artwork. My name is Larry Weeks. Okay, this is a piece, uh, it's, uh, John Coltrane. I, I do a process which I call illigami, which is a combination of illustration and the uh, Japanese uh, gami term, meaning uh, working with paper. So, and I also uh, wanted to, to get the feeling of the music by having the artist surrounded by one of the original songs. So these, the music sheets in the back are, are sheets from John Coltrane's music. Uh, the second piece is um, the goddess Oshun, which is a Yoruba goddess, and she is like the, the Mother Earth, so you can see her embracing the children, embracing the energy of the, of the Earth, and uh, also try to incorporate a feeling of, of a garden or a jungle in the background. Uh, this piece is based upon a piece of artwork that I found, photograph that I found on a, about a, a Yoruba drum. So it also expresses a sense of community and a sense of people like working together and, and building a, a family. And this is a chowry mask, and I, I like to incorporate the, the kente cloth fabrics in the uh, art piece because I think it brings some connection to, to ancestors. And this is uh, Thelonious Monk, and he's surrounded by his music, and his music is, is swirling around him. And, and, and uh, it's around, but the piece is called Round Midnight, and you can see that the music is, uh, is encompassing him. Again, my name is Larry Weeks, and I thank you for coming out and watching the, the video about the uh, Fulton Art Fair, and uh, hopefully you're, you're interested in something and it inspires you. Okay, how the world doing out there? I'm at a very uh, extraordinary place. This is the Fulton Fair Art. Uh, we here at uh, Sunday, the, uh, June the 12th. I'm a first time member. I'm a professional artist and uh, producer for Brick Medium here in Brooklyn. And what I'm doing, I'm filling all the good people over here. A lot of them are veterans. 
uh, some of them uh, era Vietnam veterans, some of them career veterans, but they are veterans as well, as well as uh, they are artists. And a lot of their work are extraordinary, fantastic, that I uh, really amazed when I see this. I'm so happy and I'm proud of uh, you know all the work that I see so far. So what I'm gonna do is introduce myself, uh, which again is Melvin Isaac. I'm a professional artist and I'm a community producer for Brick Medium. And the art that you see behind me uh, right here is a uh, extraordinary piece that I had did. It won a lot of wars. It's called African Ritual. And this is a man and a woman. And what they're doing is looking over their uh, community, over their kids. Uh, so this way they make sure that they being protected. It's a very good, excellent piece. It's got a lot of colors, a vibrant colors, and it shows emotions into that. This one right here, uh, this is a collection of Eric Edwards, uh, and he allowed me to uh, paint one of his collection. He goes to Nigeria, and he picks up a lot, a lot of different artifacts, and uh, I filmed him, and he allowed me to uh, do one of his art. There's so many of them, but this one right here, is, uh, is a triangle uh, slave market, and this is from the Baoli people and the Ivy Coat. This tells a lot, a lot of history about our culture, how we uh, started and how we got here. Because as you know, we was royalty, we was king and queens, uh, but you know, things happened, but we got here. And the funny thing about it, uh, although we went through the Immaculation Proclamation, we went through the uh, auction, we went through the cotton field, we went through so much, but end up being the president twice of the United States, Barack Obama. Now it tells you a lot about us, who we are. And uh, the last thing, I just want to uh, say something about uh, uh, our greatest hero that we ever had, the boxer uh, Muhammad Ali, when he passed away. He instilled so much powerful, positive things that we should have in ourselves, because we are the greatest. And so I just want to, uh, you know, uh, recommend uh, him because I know he in a safe place in heavens and uh, believe that he's still the greatest so with that thought there uh, Oh, the last one was I don't know if you could see this one right here This is my picture that I did uh, I'm gonna zoom in on it and I just finished it doing it So let me zoom on it and that way you can see what this is Okay, okay, I hope you can see that That's my picture and here's me so uh, I'm very proud of me doing me. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gerald Jones, and I'm a visual artist. And I reside in the Bronx, but I'm born and raised right here in Brooklyn. And I participate in this festival, this exhibit, every year for the last 10 years and I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, I went to school in Brooklyn. I got married in Brooklyn. I raised my kids in Brooklyn. And I'm a Brooklynite. I've studied art at Pratt Institute. Uh, when I got out, when I came home from Vietnam, I enrolled in a GI program and studied and completed my education at Brooklyn College. And, uh, but now I reside in the Bronx, and I participate in all burrows with my art. Uh, my first piece I want to explain is called A Spiritual Quest. Uh, it's spiritual entities having human experiences. And with this particular painting, I try to illustrate the spiritual entities questing light, searching for light searching for wisdom. I use these particular uh, colors to illustrate that there are multiple colors in spiritual entities. There's no, there's no basic color, there's color and energy in all spirits. This one here, is all, this is called the journey. Um, it try to illustrate what the spiritual entities are seeking light, they seek in space and they can bind it all together to make one journey. And I tried to make, illustrate with all the different colors that once again, that you need all the spiritual entities together to make that journey. I, I, uh, 
I try to make it positive in a way that it's a positive message. This one here um, is called The Awakening. This here is a, also illustrates spiritual entities on a spiritual journey. And as you see once again, they all have to be joining to combine together to make this quest. And by doing so, making this quest, they vibrate energies, but they also create the face of energy. And therefore they can bind and, and they own their journey. And these, these particular ones here is like the guardians of the spirits. And I try to once again, is to make all the, the entities combined in the colors and a method is combined to make one mighty spiritual journey. My name is Tomas Hull, and happy to be part of the Fulton Art Fair. Uh, this is a art fair that has been in the existence for at least 58 years, and I'm happy to be part of it. This is my third year. I have uh, four of my art pieces, which are abstract. Uh, this first one here is uh, Water Stream, and this other one is Insert Searching, and uh, the other one is uh, Blue Hen, and the other, the next one is uh, Missing Piece. These four abstract uh, painting, you can see that I, uh, I'm very colorful. I, I enjoy working with color, and uh, because I believe that uh, colors provoke our emotion, and uh, I am a, a recent retiree from the United States Postal Service after 36 years of service there, and I retire. I decide that I, I, I to revisit one of my love, which was art. And I'm enjoying painting, I'm, I'm improving, and I'm advancing with the, uh, with the input of a lot of the master painters that I surround, especially Brother Otto, who are uh, always uh, teaching us. Uh, goodbye. Okay, I'm Claudia McKay, out here this summer 2016 representing my husband who died in 2012, his artwork, and he has landscapes, seascapes, and all kinds of artwork that he did here. This is, is his work here, his all work. This is his drawings and whatnot, and uh, he has everything going on, uh, creative artwork that he did before he passed, and it's much more. Okay, this is a famous drawing that he did with the ladies in Africa, and they're struggling and making it work for them. And um, we did a tremendous uh, artwork with that. And this one is um, all painting that he did of flowers that he brought me for Mother's Day, and in the vase that he brought it in. And it looks so gorgeous. And this is a town that he's seen, that he did pop art with that has the animals and the houses in it. And this is uh, a drawing that he did, the abstract. And this is the abstract that he did. And he has plenty more of all of these abstract landscapes and seascapes artwork. And 2012, he passed away, and I'm carrying on his legacy. And I would like y'all to um, do what you do best. Enjoy the artwork and enjoy what I have here. And if you are interested, give me a call at 347-608-4734. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Brenda Mattingly. I am a resident here in Brooklyn, New York, Bed-Stuy. This is my work that I am featuring and exhibiting here at the Fulton Art Fair. I've been a member of the Fulton Art Fair for over 20 years now. Um, 
I live and work here, as I said before, in Bed-Stuy, and I've been participating in this here art. This is my artwork, and it's called Bead Art. Um, I am a self-taught artist. I've been working on this art for over 20 years also, and I teach it and give workshops. What we have here are two pieces. One piece is called Let Go and Let God. The other piece is called Mother and Child. Each bee that you see incorporated in this work comes with love and thoughts. Um, this work, as you can see, it's kind of hard to explain it, but it is a very uh, moving and touching piece. As I said before, it's called Let Go and Let God. And this piece, as you see, is mother and child. All my work that I do or create is done by beads. Done with beads and all types of beads. Uh, I hope that you like this. And if you can, this weekend, come out and see the show. Okay, thank you very much. Well, as I said, I hope to see you. We have two more weekends to come down to the Fulton Art Fair and come and see all of this beautiful art out here. My name is Brenda Mattingly, bead artist. I am not on the website, so you can't see me there. But if you go on Facebook, you can punch up Brenda Mattingly and you can see some of my work. Okay, thank you, thank you. Hello, my name is Tabitha Theogene. I am a member of the Fulton Art Fair. I am the youth coordinator of the Fulton Art Fair membership. Um, I've been with the committee, I've been with the committee since my first year, but I've been part of the Fulton Art Fair for about four years now. Um, I discovered, I learned of uh, Fulton Art Fair through Dorsey's Art Gallery. That's where I met Charlotte, um, Otto, Carl McIntosh, um, a few members that, a few members that are not here that usually do come here, Joe Biden, uh, Sharnika Wright, um, and whatnot. Um, I've, when I first came to the Fulton Art Fair, it was just as an audience member. I just came as a supporter as well to support the arts and support the the fair and I was amazed at the history of the fair and how long it's been that it's been around and who uh, big name artists have been around in the Fulton Art Fair that I decided to give it a try. So um, came in my first year, I believe my first year was in 2013, <clears throat> no I'm sorry 2000 and uh, yeah 2013 and um, yeah, it was a great year. A lot of artists came out. Almost half the neighborhood was covered with art. Some came last minute and it was just, it was a lot of fun. It was just a great year, great summer. Um, now about my work, I'm very inspired by mythology, morale, um, astronomy, just basically things that have to do with the beginning of time, how life began, how People perceive the way day one was made for life, and that's always been something that inspired me. I've always loved, uh, been inspired by Greek mythology, mostly African myth uh, folk tales, and Native American folk tales, um, Sumerian mythologies, or Syrian mythologies. Every mythology in most parts of the world, um, including here in the Americas as well, such as the Caribbean, the West Indies, hearing stories of different types of religions, such as voodoo, Catholicism, Christianity, um, even, you know, past religions and whatnot, that, with stories that originate from, such as the Nazi, the spider, and whatnot. And so I tried to place some sort of morale or some sort of mythical entity into my pieces, into my drawings. Um, being that I'm a black American, mostly Haitian American, I feel that um, a lot, because of our history, we've lost a lot of our African history, so I wanted to kind of create our own mythology for here in the Americas, in a way. So, 
Yeah. Um, now, my first piece, I have to apologize. I can't remember the title because the old piece, but um, what inspired me was I used to always hear the phrase, Father Time, Father Time, Father Time. So I decided to do my own father time, but instead of a father, it's more of like a mother time. And in the piece, you see a being holding an eye and she's basically placing it in front of her to watch her past, present, and future, as well as everyone else. And um, the gears represent time as well as the sand. And as you look inside a couple of the gears, you'll notice a few details that are there such as buildings and whatnot, again, representing a certain place in a certain time. Um, it's made from, it's a mixed media, it's made with ink, uh, let's see, ink, color pencil, and a tiny bit of pastel. So, and it's on a nine by 12 uh, sketch paper. It took, didn't take me too long to make, but it was really fun. The next piece, um, this was just, this is just an unti untitled piece. I haven't named it or anything like that. Um, what inspired me to do this piece was I wanted to do a certain certain beings out of out of an abstract ob out of an abstract form. And what gave the abstract form that gave me the inspiration was the Rorschach tests. And what I did was I made a series of uh, Rorschach uh, ink ink blots. And whatever image I saw, whether it was the, you know, whatever form the, 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 the test formed itself or whatever other being was present in that form, I would place it there and um, come out. When I did this, the Rorschach uh, blot looked more like butterfly wings. So I wanted to add some sort of butterfly fairy-like creature, almost as if she's the green fairy, the same green fairy you see that you hear about in absent drinks and whatnot. So um, that was that's what kind of led me to this piece. Um, the next piece is called the Beholder, and yes, it's um, based off of the phrase "Beauty in the Eye of the Beholder." Um, basically, of course, there's a whole eyeball, but the iris, the where the uh, color of the eye appears, instead of a circle with a certain natural color, it's a rose. Um, and in the middle of the rose, it's like, this is almost a uh, black hole-like lens in the middle. And as you notice, like, you will see the planets start to rotate around that set orb. And the eye itself, the skin itself, is almost as if it's merged with the night sky. That's why you see all these little specks of uh, little stardust. And um, the reason why, and another thing to the drips, I just been a fan of drips and kind of gives it almost its own natural look so that's what um, inspired me to this piece another reason that inspired me to this piece this is actually the second version of the beholder the first one the rose was actually coming out of the eyeball and the scent the lens itself was a shape of a sun and that's what it became a, um, a solar system so that was the inspiration and now the final piece it's called the Big Bang. This one is probably one of my favorite pieces. Um, I remember the first year of the Fulton, the first year I attended the Fulton Art Fair, just as a member of my first event, um, I did a sketch of the same figure, but um, it was on a pen sketch and it was just an idea that came to mind. But after I finished the sketch, I just fell in love with the, the image that I wanted to turn into a painting. And um, so this is what came to be. The figure is almost uh, like a chrysalis-like figure. That's why you see she's almost shattered in pieces. But if you notice, some of the um, debris that's being spewed out of her, you see it coming, you see parts of it already being shot out, out of her. She represents the Big Bang itself. And if you notice, the part that's blown up is her womb, meaning, you know, the womb is where life began, where life starts, where life is made. So that's what was, um, the inspiration behind this piece. One thing I like, another thing I like about this piece is um, late when I first started off, I usually started off uh, drawing off of a white canvas, but then I started uh, painting off a black canvas instead and started going from dark to light instead of going from light to dark. And it just was just a lot of fun doing it. It just became my, my element um, whatnot. Um, this is acrylic as well as all uh, the beholder and um didn't take me long to make it was really quick 
Um, I hope that in the future my pieces can inspire a lot more young generations to really pay attention to their history. I want to persuade more of my young, my generation to look more in there within their own history. You know, nowadays you hear many people saying they're not who they are, but you know, what I want people to, I want to remind young, my generation that history is what makes us, period. And even though my paintings may not be historically accurate, just inspiring them and making them curious about, you know, what my, what is my spirit? Who is my ancestors? Are they following right now? I hope those are the questions that my paintings could, you know, appear within their minds. So, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Godfrey Prince. I became a, a sculptor due to the fact that I could have seen things and designed it in a likeness of myself and uh, using other shapes to create beauty. I started this venture in the 60s, around 1964-65, while I was in Europe studying welding. From since then to now, I have uh, had the opportunity to have few pieces assembled, and uh, I choose a line which I think relaxes me in a cosmic way that I can express myself. There are many pieces around me here now which I feel has to do with energy, guardianship, transformation, and a variableness of good thought. Putting these thoughts into their work or the sculptures to create effects on those who view it. I find that there's an excitement at most times, no matter how small it is, when one looks at a structure or a painting which tantalizes us and we try to define what part of it is us. So in that view, I pursue this goal of sculpture. To find the essence in molding things and to beautify whatever surrounding it is placed in. This line of of thought has me always thinking what causes this and why the cause has to be magnified at that time. At the same time seeing the beauty of nature unfolding. I don't have all the books written yet to write down the proper names of their shape, the pleasantries of it, because I'm still being in the essence of being tantalized by their behavior, which is a good thing. As an artist, there's a certain stimulus comes of maintaining that pose, that, uh, that posture. And uh, it brings a quietness which only the artist himself can talk to and get different essence out of his conversation to reproduce structures or shapes. I 
will continue in this manner to exploit any new and variable ideas that will give shape, transformation, and beauty to one and to excite others on such beauty. The pieces that surrounds me represent many of ideas. I have here, which is swinging, a sundial, right? This will give you an idea where the sun energy is being transferred, moving this dial also. I have a guardian in front of me, which acts as a governor or a village. He represents safety, energy, behavior, growth, and development. The one to my right, these are cosmic beings who came and in their own way start to transfer or transform themselves and they take shapes like these because of our environment. In catching this shape, this was true meditation. Right. And I only hope that they will be cut on in the near future. So here we are, the three pieces. You have the sundial, you have the, the guardian, and you have the cosmic people. Uh, hello. Yes, my name is uh, Mr. Clarence Wood Jr. And I'm a been with the Fulton Art Fair for nearly 40 years. As you see, uh, behind me I have some artwork that I did in pastel and pencil. I've been uh, doing these in pastels and uh, pencil for the last 15 years. And when I illustrate inside my uh, Brooklyn Art Studio, I like doing things like flowers and butterflies and insects and street uh, scenes and whatnot. And uh, usually when I go out and party, whatever, I go to uh, play basketball or I go hang out in the neighborhood, whatever, I'm able to execute these things on uh, paper and canvas. You see that they are very, very colorful in tone and very, very uh, attractive for someone to buy, you know, and at a very, very low cost. So, you know, I uh, wish myself well if other, uh, other um, aspirations. You all right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Say again? Right not that. No, that's it. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, all right. Okay, hold on. Okay, what are you going to do right now? Uh, you're going to be talking about... You express all of them at one time. Uh -huh. But if you could, you want to talk about each one of them? Uh -huh. Okay, so... <laughs> And pencil? Okay. Okay. All right. My first illustration is of the three musicians. It's done in pastel and pen and ink. It took me around about maybe a day to get that done and to get it framed the next day. Down below, I have um, designs of flowers done in pencil and pastel. It took me around about two days to get this uh, done, the way it's executed in uh, high uh, gloss colors. Yellow, green, red, blue, and red, and had a lot of fun doing this particular uh, illustration. Third one, 
below is another street scene illustration. The medium is pencil and pastel and pen and ink. It took me around about maybe two hours to get this one out of the way. Uh, mostly the ones I, I'm showing to you it took around at least maybe an hour or two for me to complete the illustrations and whatnot. This one's another flower illustration. Also done in color pencil, pen and ink, and uh, pencil. It took me around about two hours to get this one completed. It's insane. Coming up. Okay. Okay. The bottom one here is also a um, one on flowers. And you see some designs. Okay, the medium is, that is done in is done in pencil, color pencil, and pen and ink. It took me around for one hour to complete that particular uh, illustration. Okay, this top piece that I did uh, two years ago, the title of the uh, illustration is called People Dancing at a Block Party. The size is 12 by 16. And the medium is pastel, pen and ink, and pencil. It took me around for one hour to complete this particular piece. Down the second one below is called Springtime Butterflies Part 1. It's also a 12 by 16 pastel illustration. It took around about maybe two hours to complete this one. Um, uh, the colors are very, very vibrant, very, very colorful, and you know, very aspiring for uh, anyone to buy at this particular point. The, the third piece I uh, titled is called Springtime Butterflies Part 2. It's done mainly in pencil and colorful pastel, blue, reds, and, and green. It took me around about two hours to get this one complete. It's also an aspiring masterpiece that I did two years ago. The fourth piece here, the title is 12 by 16. Uh, it's also a street scene, people dancing at a block party part two. It took me around about maybe two hours to get, get this piece complete. Very vibrant, very colorful, and it's aspirate for anyone that that, that that wants to buy it. The price will be at most of these all these runs for at least fifty dollars each. Very, very convenient, very, very priceful. Yeah. Well, uh, I've been doing it for uh, since five years old, and uh, I've been zooming in the sporting art fair for close to thirty-five years, and I'm going to continue to exhibit with the Fulton Art Fair as long as possible. My name, my name is Clarence Moore Jr. I'm sounding off. Thank you. My name is Denzel Bilad. I'm an artist working out of Brooklyn. I originally moved here in 1981, right over here in Saratoga Avenue. And um, this is about my fifth year exhibiting out here at the Fulton Art Fair. I've met my teacher over there, Mr. Otto Niels, and I go to the Dorsey Art Gallery. I've been going there for the last 10 years, and that's how come I learned to do the watercolors. The oil painting is something that I learned from my father, who is from Belize. His name is Louis Belize, famous artist from Belize. And um, I've been doing the oil painting for like 20 years. And uh, you know, it's, this is my work here. I'm passionate about music, so I mostly paint musicians, but originally I started out doing landscape because that's what my father did. This is Nina Simone, and um, I try to get colorful with it. When I saw the YouTube video, I was frozen and I just got that shot right there and I just did it. I mean, it was just about, came out nice. Based on what my teacher said, he liked it. Now this is the one, this is Monet Garden, the newer version, as it is today. I saw this shot on the internet and I decided I wanted to paint it because it's like real colorful. And so what I did, I did it with an impasto style and that's what it, that's it, that's it. This one right here, my love, my love for the music, so. That's Sonny Rowland. And um, yeah, I put a lot into this one. I really like, took me about a month. This is watercolor of um, Sade. So, um, you know, some paintings you really just like come out real nice and that one came out pretty nice. 
This one right here, this is one that I did a couple of years ago. Somewhat like uh, El Boogie. And I had to like just change it a little bit, but that's who that is. And this one right here, that one's BB King, but you know, it's a little bit, put my, t my little touch into it, change up the background. Watercolor, this is a watercolor. And yeah, that's basically my exhibition. I'm at the Fulton North Fair, and this is a wonderful event. That's all I could say, I love it. Yeah. Buona serata, good afternoon. My name is Bob Daniels, I'm at the Fulton Fair Art Festival. Okay, takes place in Brooklyn every year. Okay, this is one of the original pieces of Napier Art. I am the originator of Napier Art, so people please don't get it twisted with anybody else. I am the original. And this is one of my pieces. I actually started doing this piece in Orlando, Florida in 2006. I brought it back to New York, I played around with it, it still wasn't what I wanted. And recently, for the past three years, I've been back and forth to Italy. And I finally finished it in Italy, I think it's completed. I'm going to have it stretched next week in frame. Musicians in Love. Okay. This is a piece of my sketchbook, I had all these beautiful little doodles and I finally developed them into pictures took the pictures out of the sketchbook put a nice mat and a frame on them and they're now ready for sale this is one of the soulful style original creations this is original art on a t-shirt he's hand painted Original design, not copied, no templates. This is on a gray tee. This is another one of my designs on a black tee. The gray you see is just one color, white. So this is actually black and white and shades in between. Okay, these are the dancers. Okay, uh, a few years ago I did a show in Brooklyn and I wanted to create something different. So this is our styry styrofoam, black and white. This is in the beginning, it's the origin of man. So you have to be able to trace your family, starting from the feet and work your way up. Another piece, Dancing in Space. Again, historically, you start at the feet and you come up. Follow the plight of the people, the things they go through. Music on my mind. Thank you, sister. Music on my mind. There's always a song in my heart. Helps to keep me from thinking about some of those days that went by that I wasn't using my creative talents. It's another work in black and white. This is my version of Three Kings. And you know there were other people involved in that um, scenario also. So they're incorporated into the bodies of the kings. So it's kind of like uh, a story for you to unravel as you look through it. This is another one of my pieces that started as a doodle. And I just kept working it and working it. And I started seeing all these other images. So um, I incorporated some of the old with the new. Um, I always use my geometrics. Uh, that's very Afrocentric. And it's all your uh, relation back to Egyptology. So I use my African motif along with my um, Native American motif to bring about 
the finished product. He's being blessed as he goes from youthhood to manhood. He's called a rites of passage. He has completed his rites. He's dancing, celebrating. Joy in the village today. It's another man. Hello? This is just my art portfolio. Um, yeah, I paint all my portfolios. This is one of my portfolios. Uh, my name is Gregory Duggins. Um, I've been doing art mainly all my life. Uh, I have a degree in art and advertising design. And I'm out here today showing some work. I'm, bring, I'm gonna bring most of my work next Saturday, you know, coming through. And um, I discovered this, what, about three years ago. I was just mainly coming through, and last year was my first year participating. And um, it's been adventurous, captivating. So I'm looking forward to continuing supporting the um, full outdoor art fair. And just like doing live, vibrant paintings. All right? Now, uh, I'm an abstract expressionist, and most of the stuff I usually do is vibrant, with vibrant colors, and you can see the abstract designs in it. And so usually what I wanted to capture is some kind of imagery. So usually there's no right or wrong way to, to hang it up. And usually I'm going large. I've been doing most of my work. It's been like like 14 by seven, um, 20 by 24. I'm starting to expand out to do 30 by 30. And a couple of um, friends of mine and local artists told me I need to go big with it. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Gregory Duggins, abstract expressionist. Word up, it's the Ambassador Streets DJ Red Boy B minus radio. We got art on the fence right here in Fulton Street Park. Make sure you check out all the extraordinary artists along the fence on Fulton Street, Fulton Street side, excuse me. Make sure you get their contact information. They got some extraordinary artwork up. Go check them out. Brick live on the cam. Ambassador Streets DJ Red Boy B Minus Radio. We got art on the fence right here in Fulton Street Park. Make sure you check out all the extraordinary artists along the fence on Fulton Street, Fulton Street side, excuse me. Make sure you get their contact information. They got some extraordinary artwork up. Go check them out. Rick Live on the cam.
that switch it up. Let's go. Footwork. Come on, let me see some footwork. 
one, two. Yeah, what, what she said. Right well, direction. Right, right direction. direction. Yeah, yeah. Good. 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 You guys coming out here? It. You guys getting out here? Oh, you guys coming out? You hear them? Uh, yeah, I, I've been around, but I've been seeing them show. Yeah, they yeah, good. They, 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 they good. Yeah, they good. Yeah, they good. They really good. They really good. They're professional. That's why I got a tape too. We're lucky to have them. Ooh. They're, they're on top of this. Yeah, who's they? This and they singing all, all the original this songs. This is not amateur. Yeah. That's why we hired them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be nice year. to see a live band. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I it would be nice to see live music. Okay, okay. you know Let's what we're wait. doing? Hold on, hold on. That's okay. Oh, I forgot. Because it's being fake. Everything's over. It's on there. How do you say that? Next week, we got Jeff King coming to pass the ground.
Thank you very much. We are the right direction featuring Miss Missy Lee. Mama said, 
if you learn to pray. He'll say to you. But this song here is very important. It's about us. It's really about us. We got two things that we gotta do, black people. We gotta do this.
Ambassador Streets, DJ Red Boy, B-Minus Radio. We got Art on the fence right here in Fulton Street Park. Make sure you check out all the extraordinary artists along the fence on Fulton Street, Fulton Street side, excuse me. Make sure you get their contact information. They got some extraordinary artwork up. Go check them out. Rick Live on the cam. I'm 